Hello everyone. So, in last lecture we have learned different iterative methods, point gauss seidel method, line gauss seidel method and also with relaxation factor we have learned successive point successive gauss seidel method and line successive gauss seidel method and also alternating direction implicit method. Now, today we will solve some application problems and here we will show the C program for solving this algebraic equation. So, let us consider the same equation, the Laplace equation, but let us write for a stream function. So, we are writing the steam function equation for steady, two dimensional, incompressible and inviscid flow. Steady, two dimensional, incompressible and inviscid Okay, so, you will get Laplace equation where we can write del 2 psi by del x square plus del 2 psi by del y square is equal to 0 where psi is the stream function. So, with constant step size delta x and delta y, if you discretize this equation with central difference method, then we will get the algebraic equation like. So, you can see, so these are i j, this is your i plus 1 j, this is your i minus 1 j and this is your i j plus 1 and this is your i j minus 1 okay. and delta x and delta y are constant, this is your delta x and this is your delta y. So, if you discretize this equation, obviously, you are going to get psi i plus 1 j minus twice psi i j plus psi i minus 1 j divided by delta x square plus psi i j plus 1 minus 2 psi i j and plus psi i j minus 1 divided by del y square is equal to 0. Okay. So, now if you rewrite this equation in this way, say we are writing this psi i j we are taking in the right hand side. So, we will get 2 into 1 by delta x square plus 1 by delta y square. So, these are the coefficient diagonal coefficient for psi i j okay, equal to. So, we can write 1 by delta x square okay, psi i plus 1 j okay, plus 1 by delta x square psi i minus 1 j plus 1 by del y square psi i j plus 1 and plus 1 by del y square psi i j minus 1. Okay. And if you write say, in the coefficient way, let us write that this is your i plus 1 j. So, if we write this point as p, this is your east e, it is west w, it is north and south and the coefficient for these points if we write then we can write a e. So, a e is the coefficient of phi i plus 1 j. So, that is 1 by delta x square. Okay. A w is the west at this point. So, what is the coefficient of psi i minus 1 j? So, it is 1 by delta x square. 
similarly a north. So, at this point i j plus 1 the coefficients of psi i j plus 1 is 1 by delta y square and a south at this point what is the coefficient? So, we are denoting the coefficient okay, 1 by delta y square and we are writing the diagonal coefficient a p as 2 into 1 by delta x square plus 1 by delta y square. Okay. So, this way just we are denoting the coefficient. So, you can write here actually a p psi i j is equal to a e psi i plus 1 j plus a w psi i minus 1 j plus a north psi i j plus 1 and a south psi i j minus 1. So, we are solving for psi i j. So, a p you just divide in the right hand side. So, you will get psi i j is equal to 1 by a p a e psi i plus 1 j plus a w psi i minus 1 j plus a n psi i j plus 1 plus a s psi i j minus 1. Okay. So, when you are going to write the program, so you can write in any language whatever you know, say you may write in Fortran or C or C plus plus. So, when you are going to write you first calculate all these coefficients a e, a w, a n, a s and a p. So, that it will be easy while solving this algebraic equation. For convergence, we are telling that you have to meet a convergence criteria. So, to give the condition for the convergence, we will calculate the error and we will calculate error in this way, error. So, at each grid point, we will find the difference with the new value and the old value. Obviously, your psi new value is at psi k plus 1 and psi old value at psi k. So, we will write psi k plus 1 okay, of point i j minus psi k at i j and we will just square it. So, that whether it is plus or minus it will give a positive and for all the interior grid points we will just sum it up interior grid points. Okay. So, you sum it up and once you come out of the loop then you make it as summation you first calculate this then you divide by total number of grid points total number of interior grid points. Okay. So, first what we will do? We will calculate the difference at each grid point psi new minus psi old, then we will make it square, then we will sum it up in all the interior grid points, then we will just divide it by uh, total number of interior grid points and square root of that will give the error. So, after calculating this error, you just compare with a small value epsilon, if it is less than epsilon, then you just come out of the loop, otherwise loop will continue. So, this error if a less than some small value, so small value let us say 10 to the power minus 8 or 10 to the power minus 6, you give a small value and if this error goes below to that given small error value which is 10 to the power minus 8 or minus 6, then you come out of the loop. So, you write the code in that way. So, now let us define this problem. So, we are solving a stream function equation. Here, we have taken a domain of you can see 6 by 4. Okay. So, 6 by 4 domain we have taken and in x direction the length is 6 and y direction length is 4. Here you can see that if it is origin then from the origin at a distance 1 you have a inlet. Okay. So, this is your 
inlet okay and here in the right boundary you have outlet so here in the left boundary so in the left boundary top boundary and this boundary we are specifying the steam function at psi is equal to 0 okay and here in the x equal to 1.2 to x equal to 6 in this wall we are specifying psi is equal to 100 okay so these are the boundary conditions and in the right hand side so in the right boundary in the outlet you spay give the boundary condition the normal gradient to this boundary is 0. So, that means del psi by del x is 0. Okay. So, in all the boundaries we have given the boundary conditions and here at the inlet okay, you can specify the psi as linearly varying from 0 to 100 okay, because at this point you have psi 100 at this point you have psi 0. So, linearly you can vary 0 to 100. In this case we are considering total number of grid points from 1 to 31 in x direction. So, your m is 31 total number of grid points and in y direction we are varying j is equal to 1 to j is equal to 21. So, j is equal to sorry n is equal to 21. So, if you see you are getting here delta x of distance 0.2 okay. and similarly delta y you can find that it will be 0.2. So, we are using constant step size delta x as 0.2 and delta y as 0.2. So, obviously, two grid points will be there at here and here. So, you are specifying the boundary condition of psi here 0 and psi 100 here. In the interior points now you need to solve this discretized equation whatever we have derived in previous slide. So, you can see. So, this is the equation we need to solve at all interior points and you apply the boundary conditions as specified here. So, what is happening you just imagine that flow is coming through this inlet these are walls where psi is equal to 0 and psi is equal to 100 are specified and from the right boundary your flow is going out parallelly. Okay. So, if it is going parallelly then the normal gradient of psi will be 0. So, with these boundary conditions and your discretized equation you just write the program. So, I am not going to describe the details how to write the program you should learn some basic programming language Fortran or C or C plus plus and write the code okay, for the given problem. So, you practice it okay, you write in using any programming language. Here I am going to show the Jacobi iteration method and point Gauss Seidel method using C programming language. So, you can see here. So, this is just we are adding the header files. Okay. So, you know that it is stdio.h that means standard input output okay, library you are using for printing and uh, taking the value. std lib so standard library so this is for allocating the memory okay so if you are using some array or dynamic memory so for that you need to include this library and math dot a so mathematical operation you need to include this header file so this is the main program so we are specifying total number of points m as 31 n as 21 so, these are defining as integer the index i and index j we are specifying at i integer i j. Now, we are finding the delta x and delta y okay, delta x and delta y here. So, length in x direction is 6 
divided by m minus 1. So, 6 by 30, so obviously it will be 0 0.2 and delta y is 4 by n minus 1, so it will be 4 by 20, so it is also 0 0.2. So, we have constant step size. Now, we are defining the arrays, one is storing the new value psi nu okay, and storing the old value psi old. As first we are showing the Jacobi iteration method, we are using Jacobi iteration method to solve this algebraic equation. So, we need to store the old value as well because while solving the equation, the algebraic equation, we have seen that all the neighbor points will be at the old value. So, for that reason we are writing these arrays okay, psi new and psi old okay, of size m and n. So, m in the i direction, n in the j direction and you can see all these we are specifying double. Okay. So, you can also use float, but double you know that it is having 14 decimal digits of precision. Okay. So, in float you have uh, 7 decimal digits of precision and in double you have fif uh, 15 yes 15 decimal digits of precision okay so for getting more decimal digits we are using double and double we have specified delta x delta y psi old and psi new now you calculate all the coefficients. Okay. So, we have defined you see A s 1 by delta x square A w sorry A s A s is 1 by delta y square. Okay. A w is 1 by delta x square. So, that we have written. Okay. So, this is the power okay, delta x 2. A p. So, A p is obviously minus 2 into 1 by delta x square plus 1 by delta y square. So, A p you have written minus 2 1 by delta x square plus 1 by delta y square. Okay. A e and A n similarly 1 by delta x square and A n is 1 by delta y square. So, here we have calculated all the coefficients because these are constant it is not going to change okay, uh, while executing the code because delta x and delta y are constant. So, now you specify the boundary conditions and also you have to initialize the values because you have to guess a value. Okay. So, it is at when you are going from k to k plus 1. So, while starting the code at k you have to specify some values and that is known as initialization. So, at all interior points you have to initialize some value of psi as well as you have to apply the boundary conditions. Here only on the walls you have Dirichlet boundary conditions and on the right wall or right boundary you have Neumann boundary conditions. So, Neumann boundary conditions if you apply first order accurate scheme or second order accurate scheme depending on that one uh, two points or three points will be involved and you can see that you have to repeatedly calculate the value at the right boundary because it involves the interior points and interior points value will change with iteration. So, you can see here we are starting from i is equal to 0 to so we are using loop. Okay. So, you can see this is your for loop. Okay. So, this is your for loop. So, you can see that it is your initial value you are starting from i is equal to 0. Okay. Then you are actually seeing i less than m. So, this is your uh, condition you are applying and i plus plus you are sort of incrementing. Okay. So, i plus plus. So, here in the x direction you are just used for loop and in the j direction also it is varying j is equal to 0 to j is less than n and j plus plus. So, here you are including the boundary points as well as interior points. Now, for the boundaries now you are applying so top boundary so psi nu is 0 okay we have seen it left boundary so where i is equal to 0 okay so 
if i is equal to 0 then you apply this left boundary condition it is 0 i less than equal to 5. So, bottom near to the origin that portion is having again 0. So, psi nu is equal to 0 and in the right side of this inlet you can see you have a 100 value. So, i greater than equal to 6 then you will get the boundary condition as 100. So, that you are applying and else. So, if you have all the interior points you are specifying at 0 value. So, you are putting psi i j is equal to 0. Okay. So, boundary conditions we have applied and in all other points we have applied psi as 0 value. You can start uh, with some other values as well. Okay. You can take the average value of minimum and maximum that also you can uh, assign. So, here we have assigned psi i j is equal to 0. Okay, so, now we are starting the Jacob iteration method. Okay. So, to know how much iteration it took just we are defining integer iteration. Okay. So, it is just defining 0 and double error we are giving a high value. So, that your in this loop uh, it will go inside and this is just to write okay, some values in a file. So, this is the syntax. Uh, so, we have opened a file with error dot text where it will with iteration what is the error. So, it will print in a file. Now, we are starting the do while loop. Okay. So, do while loop. So, we are starting with do and the condition we are giving at the last. Okay. So, while writing the while. So, this is do while loop and you can see that it is a exit control loop. So, it will enter here execute the statement then it will check okay, at the end. So, it is a exit control loop. Now, here first we are whatever values are there of psi new okay, we are storing at the psi old. Okay. So, what we are doing psi k okay, whatever is the old values okay, we are storing from the new value okay, because now we will calculate the interior points where psi nu will calculate and it will have a new value. So, now to calculate the error we need the old values. So, we are storing this value as old so that we can calculate the error. Now, you write the main program. So, whatever Jacobi method you know. So, that we are applying here. Okay. So, you have the algebraic equation they are only one unknown is there that is your psi i j at k plus 1 and in the right hand side if you use Jacobi method then all the neighbor points i plus 1 j, i minus 1 j, i j plus 1 and i j minus 1 psi value you have to take from the previous iteration value that means k. Okay. That means, here we have we have to take the value from the old. So, you can see here now psi nu i j. So, we are you can see the loop. Okay. So, now we are looping over the interior points. Okay. All interior points we are looping. So, you can see we are starting from i is equal to 1 because boundary value we have given i is equal to 0 okay. and i is equal to m. So, interior points will be i is equal to 1 to i less than m minus 1 okay. and i plus plus. So, here similarly j is equal to 1, j less than n minus 1, j plus plus. Now, we are calculating whatever governing equation you have uh, discretized and written the final algebraic equation of that Laplace equation that we are writing here in Jacobi iteration method. So, now psi nu i j you are calculating 1 by p this is your diagonal term. Okay. A p is nothing but minus 2 into 1 plus beta square into now you are writing all the coefficients. Okay. Okay. So, you can see that your a a psi old, a w psi old, a e psi old and n psi old. Okay. So, this we are calculating the value of psi nu. So, you can see this this is the equation. Okay. So, psi i j is equal to all these values okay. and here you see a p we have written plus okay. here a p I have written plus okay. and that is why it is uh, right hand side all are positive, but while doing the coding I have taken 
a p as minus 2 1 plus delta x square plus delta y square and for that reason you are in governing equation we are writing minus here. Okay. So, because this a p is your minus so it should be actually your positive so this minus we have written. Okay. So, it is a p is minus 2 into 1 plus beta square. So, if it is so, so then your psi i j okay, at k plus 1 is 1 by a p we have written as minus a s psi k i j minus 1 minus a w psi k i minus 1 j minus a e psi i plus 1 j and minus a n psi i j plus 1 and all at old iteration level. Okay. So, minus is coming for this notation only. So, this we have used Jacobi iteration method okay. and now we need to apply the homogeneous norm and boundary condition because here you have updated the interior points. So, at the right boundary value you can immediately update using this first order discretization we have used. Okay. So, del psi by del x is 0. So, we have used psi m minus 1 j minus psi m minus 2 j divided by delta x is equal to 0. So, this is your backward difference approximation we have used. So, psi m minus 1 j is equal to psi m minus 2 j. Okay. So, we have just updated the value at the right boundary. Other places we have reached late boundary condition. So, we do not need to apply the boundary condition, but this inside this loop you have to apply because when you are solving for the interior points you need the value of the boundary. So, right boundary is Neumann boundary condition. So, you have to update this boundary value so that at the interior points it will get the updated value. So, you can see we have updated here. So, the first order accurate scheme we have used here. Now, we are calculating the error. So, error first we are applying 0 because error is 0. Now, here we are we have to sum it up. Okay. So, here we are doing just summing it up at all the interior points. Okay. So, i is equal to 0, i less than m, i plus plus and so all the points okay, including boundary because right boundary also your value is getting changed. So, you are writing error is equal to error plus the difference of psi nu minus psi old is square. Okay, so, that you are doing. So, now you can see that you have 0 first, then you got some value at first grid point at i is equal to 0 and j is equal to 0. Okay. Then it will go to i is equal to 2, okay. then again it will loop over all. So, you can see that this error will be summing up okay, at all the grid points. So, that we are doing here. Then when you are coming out of this for loop, then we are doing the square root of error, square root of error divided by total number of points. So, total number of points is m into n. Okay. So, that we are dividing. So, error is equal to square root of error divided by total number of points which is m into n. So, this error now you check whether it is smaller than the specified value of epsilon which we have specified maybe 10 to the power minus 8 here. Okay. So, if it is greater than 10 to the power minus 8 then it will continue. Once it becomes less than 10 to the power minus 8, so it will come out of the loop and you can see now we are in the screen we are printing what is the iteration and corresponding error. So, this is iteration is integer error is double and in the file okay, whatever we have opened that in that file we are printing iteration versus error. Okay. So, each iteration how the error is decreasing that we are printing in a file. Then we are incrementing the iteration okay, because we started with iteration 0 now we are incrementing. 
So, this loop will continue still this condition is satisfied. Okay. So, this is the convergence criteria and the error we have calculated you can see using this way. So, to plot the steam function you need to write in a specified format here after solving this equation what you will get? You will get only data right. So, at each grid point you will get the value of psi. Okay. So, seeing the data you will not visualize anything. So, to visualize you need to post process it using some post processing software. So, you can use MATLAB or you can use um, uh, TechPlot or any other post processing software to visualize how your psi looks. Okay. So, you have given boundary conditions, you have solved the governing equations. Now, after solution whatever data you are getting how it looks. Okay. So, for that in a take plot format we have actually written you can see for all the points boundary as well as interior in a file file 2 which is your stream dot plt and we are plotting the x this is your y and this is the psi value. Okay. So, it is a take plot format where you can uh, write in some other format okay, to visualize the data point. So, this we have described how to write a C program for this steam function equation using Jacobi iteration method. Now, let us see if you use Gauss Seidel method, point Gauss Seidel method, then how will write. So, in point Gauss Seidel method, what is the difference with the Jacobi iteration method? The difference is that whatever updated values are available that you use okay. because some point already you have solved at k plus 1 level. So, th that is available at k plus 1 level. So, that value you just use for the computation of psi at i j. So, for that similar way now in this case we do not need to write old values we are not using the psi old value because whatever updated that anyway we will use. So, you do not need any array for psi old. Okay. So, that you have to remember. So, here you see what we are doing the rest of the things you have to anyway define only thing is that here you see here when we are going in the do while loop okay, do while loop rest of the things you have to do whatever way Jacobi method we have written the coefficients all these you have to calculate I am showing only the difference where in the loop we have. So, now do while loop error you define then you loop over the interior points. Okay. So, all the interior points you are looping. Now, to calculate the error of the interior points we are defining temp is equal to psi ij. So, you can see that psi ij is calculated from the next equation before calculating we are storing in a temporary variable. Okay, and that we have defined as a double here. Okay. So, here we are storing this psi value first in a temporary variable, okay. it is not array, okay. so it is just double. So, this you just store it, then you calculate the psi ij. Okay. Psi ij now you calculate whatever way we have discussed the Gauss Seidel iteration method. So, in Gauss Seidel iteration method in the right hand side whatever updated values are available that you use. So, that is why you are using you see 1 by p is psi i j minus 1 a w psi i minus 1 j a e psi i plus 1 j and a n psi i j plus 1. So, you can see here we are calculating psi i j and wherever it is already calculated the updated values will be used if it is not calculated then the old iteration value it will take. Okay. So, previous iteration value automatically it will take. So, you do not need to define a different variable for psi old. Okay. So, here that is why you have used. So, whatever updated values of psi are available that will be used otherwise the old iteration value will be used. So, that is the difference and immediately we are calculating the error because error plus your psi new minus psi old. So, it is temp 
where we have stored the psi value so that became now old because we have calculated the new value of psi. So, psi minus temp whole square that we have calculated and that we are summing it up and after coming out the loop you have to just calculate square root of error divided by total number of points m into n. So, if you do then that you just compare with the specified value whether it is less than it or not then you just continue the loop till it converges. Okay. So, this is the difference. So, you see the error we have printed in a file okay, with different iteration and that we have plotted in x direction log iteration okay, x axis log iteration y axis log of error we have plotted okay, with Jacobi iteration method and Gauss Seidel iteration method. So, you can see your Jacobi iteration method is the red color continuous this line. Okay. So, you can see this line obviously, it is taking more iteration and to converge up to 10 to the power minus 8 it took 2494 iterations. Okay. So, Jacobi iteration method took 2494 iteration, but when we use Gauss Seidel method in Gauss Seidel method the updated values already we have used and with that the error you can see the error plot. So, here to converge up to 10 to the power minus 8 it took 1319 iteration. Okay. So, you can see obviously your Gauss Seidel is converged faster than the Jacobi iteration method. Okay. So, for the same level of convergence criteria. Okay. So, 10 to the power minus 8 is your convergence criteria and Gauss Seidel. So, this green color line we have shown the log error versus log iteration for Gauss Seidel method and it took less number of iteration to converge than the Jacobi iteration. Okay. Now, let us plot the psi. Okay. So, now visualize the data point. So, you can see this is the visualization of psi. So, this is your psi contour plot. So, each line is showing the constant psi line because you can see this is your boundary right. So, here this is the boundary where psi is 0 is specified here. So, from here this top and left and up to this point you have specified psi is equal to 0 it is a constant psi line and from point 2 1.2 x equal to 1.2 to 6 you have specified 100 psi is equal to 100 and here psi is equal to 0 here psi is equal to 0 and psi is equal to 0. So, now this is your inlet this is your inlet and this is your outlet. Okay. So, flow is coming here and it is flowing this way and it is going out parallelly through the outlet. So, each constant line is showing constant steam function. So, you can see obviously, this is your psi is equal to 100 then gradually it is decreasing. So, we have shown 93.75, 81.25 and gradually it is decreasing and it is becoming psi is equal to 0 on this wall. Okay. And you can see that from the inlet it is coming in and through the outlet it is going out and whatever data points you generated by solving the Laplace equation at all interior points as well as the boundary points that we have plotted using some post processing software and we are visualizing the contour of steam function. Now, so you can see this is some application problem and you should solve this equation okay, for different problem and try to write the code. Similarly, if you solve the steady state two dimensional heat conduction equation then you will get similar equation and you can solve similarly using some iterative techniques. So, if you consider steady two dimensional heat 
heat conduction equation so what is the equation del 2 t by del x square plus del 2 t by del y square is equal to 0 okay so now you discretize using central reference okay and write the final algebraic equation okay using five points formula okay so if you use five point formula it is ij this is your i plus 1j this is your i minus 1j this is your i j plus 1 and this is your i j minus 1 and with constant step size okay delta x and delta y are constant so you can write the algebraic equation so if you compare with whatever we have done for the phi so you can write t i minus 1 j okay plus or you can write t i j is equal to 1 by 2 into 1 plus beta square okay so t i plus 1 j plus t i minus 1 j plus beta square t i j plus 1 and plus t i j minus 1 okay so beta is the ratio of step size delta x by delta y and depending on which type of iteration method you are using you just put the superscript k so if you are solving this is your k plus 1 if you are solving using gauss seidel okay point gauss seidel method then you can use i plus 1 so you have not solved yet so it is k okay i minus 1 you have already solved T i j plus 1 you have not solved, so it is value available at k and T i j minus 1 already you have solved, so it is available at k plus 1. So, this is your point gauss seidel method. Iteration method. Okay, so, you just write the program and solve this equation, just I will show the contour plots of the temperature for a given boundary conditions. So, we are considering this square domain where this is your bottom wall, left wall, top wall and right wall. Okay. So, with x equal to you do not need to give the dimensions because in non dimensional form also you can solve. Now, the for this problem we have given the boundary conditions left top and right walls at 500 Kelvin. Okay, this is your 500 Kelvin okay. and bottom wall is having the convective boundary condition. So, it now convective boundary condition means you have mixed type boundary condition. Okay. So, here you have T infinity as 300 Kelvin and H is 10 watt per meter square Kelvin. Okay, so, it is cooled okay, because 300 Kelvin is the ambient temperature okay, and ambient fluid heat transfer coefficient is 10 watt per meter square Kelvin. So, by convection okay, this bottom wall is cooled. So, you can see after solving this Laplace equation of temperature, okay, so you can get the temperature profile like this. So, this, these are contour lines. So, you can see this is your 500 okay, and as your heat is convected here. So, it gradually there will be change and the minimum temperature we got here 340 Kelvin okay, and maximum obviously it is 500 Kelvin and it varies from 340 to 500 Kelvin. So, these are all isotherms. Isotherms means it is a constant temperature line. Another boundary condition if you take say you have left wall 500 Kelvin. So, this is your 500 Kelvin. So, this is your Dirichlet boundary condition, right wall is your 1000 Kelvin. Okay. So, this is also Dirichlet boundary condition, but top and bottom walls are insulated that means adiabatic boundary conditions. So, these are adiabatic boundary conditions that means del T by del Y is 0. So, there is no heat loss through this boundary. Okay. So, del T by del Y is 0. So, no heat loss from this boundary. Okay. So, with this condition if you solve it obviously you can see that your 
temperature will lie between maximum value 1000 Kelvin and minimum value 500 Kelvin and it is varying from 1000 to 500 linearly okay, along the x direction okay, because there is no heat loss. So, obviously, your isotherm is cutting this top and bottom boundary perpendicularly because that is your del T by del Y is 0 right it, it has to be satisfied. Okay. So, to satisfy this condition your isotherms that means constant temperature line cuts the top and bottom boundary perpendicularly. So, for that essentially it becomes a one dimensional heat conduction you can see that there is no variation of temperature in the y direction. So, if it is x direction if it is y direction then you can see there is no variation of temperature in the y direction because it is a constant temperature line okay these are straight line only variation is taking place from 500 to 1000 linearly in the x direction so if you plot so this is your x okay and this is your temperature so you can see if this is your 500 kelvin and this is your 1000 kelvin so it varies linearly okay so this is your just length of the geometry okay so this is the length of the geometry so it varies linearly so you have seen that this type of boundary condition now this is your insulated boundary condition okay so this is a neumann boundary condition in earlier problem we have used convective boundary condition so here gradient is involved and you can discretize using either first order scheme so where two points will be involved if you use one sided uh, differencing so using three points then you will get a second order accurate scheme so that also you can use so you should try writing the program for different type of boundary conditions as well as with different order of accuracy so we'll stop here today thank you